أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاة Some 
complain. Complain about this stuff. So therefore, coming to the Imam, you want the Imam to intervene and help and assist. And this reminds me that in the time of Umar, Radia Talan, during his caliphate, Amir al Mumini, an old man came to him. And this old man came to Amir al Mumini, Radia Talan, and he was complaining. He said, Ya Umar, Amir al Mumini, Radia my son is not listening. My son is being disobedient to his parents. So when this brother came to me, my mind goes back. It happened since that time, and perhaps before that time, and this is happening all the time, and it's still happening today. He said, yeah, we were in my son is not listening, he is disobedient, he is doing this, he is doing that. And we were in Raita Alamo is listening. He's a caliph. And when he had finished, he gave a long list of disobedience. Amir we were in Raita Alamo, no cause is done. Young child. And he said, you know what? Your father has just given me a long list of you being disobedient and not fulfilling the rights of your parents. The child is listening. The child is, is, is emotional. Father complaining against him to so Amir and Mumi. Anumar was giving the child some advice what is to fulfill the rights of the parents. And during the course of the advice from Amir and Mumi, the child stopped. The child says, yeah, I'm your enemy. Most respectful. Do I have any rights? Listen carefully, and I see this audience, grown-ups, adults, parents. The child said to Amir and Mogini, what are my rights? Do I have any rights as a child? Meaning to say, what are the rights of my parents on me? A very important question. And the mirror moving in, now begin to say and speak about the rights of the parents to the child. Remember, remember the parent is complaining, you know. And the very first thing Amir and Momini said to the child, your wrong, your right, emanating from your parents, they are the first one to ensure your rights, to fulfill your rights. And you know, this is very, very deep. Fulfilling Amir al Mominin is telling this child, and this is the lesson for all of us. All our rights, even before we become heroes, even before we choose a spouse. 
whether male or female. No child has yet you know. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't even know if Allah will grant us offspring. So look where it starts. The first right of the parent to the child, when I say parent, but the first, the first right, even before becoming a parent, is making the correct choice. It's making a selected choice. And this was from both sides. From the male as well as the female. And it goes so deep that we have to ask ourselves, for example, the intended parties to get married. Perhaps the wife is staying to herself and asking, is he, is he going to be a good father for my child? If Allah is granting me an offspring or offspring, is he going to be a good person, a good father? And he perhaps is asking the same question. Is she going to be a good mother to my child? So you see how deep it goes. No child yet, you know. But this is the rights of the child, beginning, the beginning of the rights of the child. And more is telling the boy. Because if either party, one of them is ignorant, hasty, arrogant, what do you expect from the child? What do you expect from the child? So the first solution is having good spouses. And when we say good spouses, religiously minded people. Islamically I'm speaking of. So this is the first right, and that is where it begins. Then, Amir Mumini, right Allah, no says to the child, your right that your parents have upon you is that to give you a beautiful new. Now many of us will fall into this category, but I'm relating, you know, step by step. So the second right parents have on the child is selecting a beautiful name. And a beautiful name will of course be an Islamic name. There are some problemat problematic problems that we develop from that. But initially, perhaps, for, for example, you may choose a good Arabic name, have a good meaning, but in another language, that meaning is not suitable. So you, you know, needs of the companions, needs of him, um, from the Quran you'll get needs and so on. But the point is, a beautiful need. And you know what they thought? The child is listening. And you know what they feel, right? The parents have to the child. You should be taught the words of Allah. The parent, this is the right of the parent on the child. And this is the right of the child. You should be taught about the one who created you. The child is listening and listening and then he stopped. Because he said there are mirror moments in Puro. And think about this, you know, think about this in reality, in our life, in our situation, in the world today. Because when you look at names, many of us are choosing westernized names for our children. The child said, Ya Amir al 
And this is only three points, right? This is only three rights that the parents owe to this child. There are many more, but the child stopped. And the child said, yeah, I'll be real, but we need me. My father has not fulfilled any one of those three rights. We change the eyes. And then you want to know why your child is disobedient. He said, Ya Amir al Mominin, my father has not fulfilled any of those three rights, and that's only three. First of all, my mother is very hasty and arrogant. The mother is the first teacher of the child. The mother is the one who holds the child in her arms, the cradle. Hmm? Very arrogant and hasty, what do you expect? And my father has not given me a good name. And about the Quran, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what it is. So you see, we blaming, we blaming our children. But then we have not fulfilled the rights towards them. And Amir al Mominin turned his direction to the father. Yeah. He said, you come to complain about your son and you have not fulfilled a single right towards him. What do you expect? Brothers and sisters, I recall, I, I mentioned an ayat of Quran. This ayat open a lot of doors. This ayat of the Quran open a lot of doors for us to go in and enter. Surah al Quran Chapter number 25 of the Quran, ayat number 74. Listen carefully the translation, the meaning of the ayat. Walazina Yahoolun. And those who say, Are we among those? And those who say, O Rabbana, Habadana, Minazubajina, Wazuriyatina. Look at it. And this, you can go back even before marriage. Because even before marriage, which means your parents have passed on Islam to you. I know you have grown up, teenager, 25, 50 years or up, when they get married now. So now you are saying at that time. Let me be a good parent. And let me have a good spouse. Vice versa. She is saying this and he is saying that. Our Lord. Grant unto us what? Good spouses. Whether male or female. <clears throat> this is very marriage health, isn't it? This is your choice. <clears throat> because you are looking down the road, you know. The prophets of Allah used to look down the road. Yaqub alayhi salam called his sons, all of them, on his deathbed, because he was concerned about the deen of Allah. What will happen after I leave this world? Where are my children going? Where will go to? 
What will become of them from a religious perspective? Oh my son, who will you worship after me? You see? They were thinking about the continuation of the deen after they leave this world. And we should be doing the same thing. Because we, I can say and I can, you know, without doubt or contradiction. There are many families in our locality after the parents passed away. That is it. But that is it for the children. Nobody coming again. So look at this dua in the Quran. Our Lord grant unto us righteous spouses, religious spouses. Not just grant unto us beautiful wives or our spouse with a lot of money, wealth, no. Infinity. And beautiful offsprings. Three things, eh? A beautiful male, a beautiful female, and offspring. Righteous. Why? Because when we leave this world, they have to carry on. Think about that. They have to carry on Islam. So they start from the here. And at the end of the Dua it says, and make us now good leaders. Everything fits seen, you know. Everything fits seen to make a complete religious package. And this is our problem, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't blame the child. <laughs> Sometimes we have to blame our own self. Because you know what? There's another point of, of reality. When other occasions and celebrations come around, whether it is Christmas, whether it is New Year's Day, whether it is this or that, see how much we are involved in it. See how much Muslims are involved in it and involved in it in a way that is same that the non-Muslims are involved in. So where is the example? Where is the guidance? Where is the training of that child from a religious perspective? May Allah not Allah grant us goodness. May Allah not Allah grant us forgiveness. May Allah not Allah grant us the ability to be, first of all, a good care. And from our good care and thing, we emerge good offsprings. Because we will teach them. And they will teach their children too, you know. May Allah bless us, forgive us, and grant us this togetherness as a family in the cause of Islam, in the cause of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah grant us a special case in this paradise, you know, as well as Kulu Kali Allah, Astaghfirullah, Iwa Lakum, Wa Ikaiya Muslimi, Wa Kulu Zamin, Astaghfirullah, Iwa Lakum, Wa Ikaiya Muslimi, Wa Kulu Zamin, Astaghfirullah. الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد يا ذي من صلوا وقام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد يا ذي من قال وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا من ذنوبنا وذنوبنا قرات اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم 